So it seems that Games Workshop really isn't shy of nuking entire ranges of models that have only been released in the last six years or so. Let's talk about the miniature ranges affected in their enormous call. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought I'd talk about a Games Workshop miniature call that I've just announced. Fortunately, this time round, the grim darkness of the far future is unaffected, though we've certainly seen our fair share of cuts for those with some things being range rotated over the past few years. But I feel like this is kind of truly next level for Games Workshop, entire armies and factions getting burnt down, and their flagship range from Age of Sigmar taking some ridiculously big hits, to the extent where lots of people are going to lose some pretty big chunks out of their model collection. The announcement that Games Workshop dropped today was basically another follow-on from their new Age of Sigmar edition, maybe feeling not so very different from how they communicated the purge of the Firstborn Marines for 40k, where we had things like land speeders, support tanks, and other kits that have been around for a long time taken out of the game and put to Legends. I'm sure at least a fair few of you are at least peripherally aware that there's a new edition for Age of Sigmar coming along, so it definitely feels like there's parallels to the new 40k edition that they did for 10th edition, and it seems that each time Games Workshop does a new edition of their major gaming systems, they not only release a whole bunch of cool new things for it, but also decide what they don't want to sell anymore, and retire a whole bunch of releases. For the most part, for Warhammer 40k, that's generally tended to be older finecast stuff, which for the most part you can kind of explain from their trying to pivot away from their resin miniatures and try and make everything in plastic, but this purge really does seem kind of different, there are lots of older plastics going, though older plastics that were necessary for some entire factions. Games Workshop just removing factions from the game isn't something they do regularly. And perhaps the biggest impacts here, I'd say, are the Stormcast Eternals. They've had some relatively recent and really quite nice plastic kits just outright removed. And the game of Warcry is basically having all of its old content removed. Everything that came out around the launch for that game system, a whole bunch of really quite cool Chaos Warbands. It is definitely a bit unnerving, I sort of feel like for 40k purposes for the most part, if you've got a new plastic kit release, you'd expect that plastic kit to stick around for really quite a good long time, they don't generally tend to take down new things, but it's kind of a disturbing trend if they are willing to do that. It's not just because these miniatures are getting direct replacements, a lot of them are going to get sort of peripherally slightly different things. Broadly speaking, it sounds like this announcement is them trying to get ahead a bit. Basically, they're announcing that the miniature kits are going away, but they're still going to be fully playable in-game for a year, and then going to be removed to their Legends section, essentially consigning them to being mothballed and not really supported properly beyond that. As with 40k things, their reasoning is kind of understandable. We can't continue to sell and support literally every model we've ever made indefinitely. So the idea is, with keeping the releases coming quite so regularly and updating and refreshing models, there's going to be some stuff that falls by the wayside. I feel like for the most part, people are kind of on board with that, though it doesn't exactly make it any better if you have collected and painted up a really cool big army of a faction and then Games Workshop goes and removes it from the game. In general, they get a lot more popularity points if they sort of at least roughly replace like for like, maybe release new and updated versions of the models that aren't selling because they're too old and dated and certainly aim to keep factions playable, particularly when Warhammer armies often represent really quite a big investment, both personal, painting, and financial from people. I feel like if they are pursuing that policy, they have to do it very carefully, otherwise they're going to have a whole load of angry hobbyists that just might not trust them with future stuff. In any case, as mentioned, it looks like the Stormcast Eternals are affected in a really big way by this. Skaven models are being removed, though it looks like they're getting a ranged refresh, so I'm sure a lot comes back and they get lots of new attention, which might not be the worst. Age of Sigma looks like it's kind of losing two factions in Beasts of Chaos and Uruk Bone Splitters, though apparently the Beasts of Chaos are going to be ported to the Old World, so they'll have a release for that somewhere down the line. And then there's really quite a lot of really quite cool and fairly recent plastic Chaos kits for the Warcry Warbands. Again, must be kind of painful if their rules are getting mothballed, if you've collected multiple of those. It feels like it's the entire core section of the things that came first for Warcry, and some really fun miniatures in those, I think. Starting out with the Stormcast Eternals, they look like they're losing 23 kits. Plenty of these will likely be replaced or updated with the new Age of Sigmar launch. They did show off the new version of the Liberator for the Stormcast Eternals as the first teaser model for New Age of Sigmar. Still though, this is just a massive, massive amount of kits to lose. I'm sure that not all of them will be replaced like for like, particularly a whole bunch of these special characters and things. It looks like most of the core stuff from the original Age of Sigmar launch, things like Liberators, Prosecutors, Paladins and Judicators, they're all going to be going away. 
I'd guess though that they're probably going to be updated by plastic kits with the new launch. But also perhaps the worst news for the Stormcast is the Sacrosanct Chamber miniatures. They were one of the launch boxes for Age of Sigma, and it looks like their range is just being outright removed. Apparently the way that this works is that those kits are no longer going to be on sale. They are going to get a battle tome for the new edition, so you can still play with those miniatures for a time. Though from summer 2025, those rules are going to be excluded from balance updates and things. Go to Legends, and go into that sort of state where they're technically playable but mothballed. Kind of fine for casual games still but just generally not getting much attention from the rules or updates, and as Games Workshop move further down the line, things that get sent to Legends at some point generally don't get further updates beyond that, and they quietly fall away from the game so you can't really play them and there's not much focus anymore. I feel like the thing that surprises me for the Stormcast though is that all these kits are recent ones, 23 kits there and all of them are less than 10 years old, Age of Sigma itself wasn't even a game system before 2015, when Games Workshop did that entire sequence blowing up the old world in the end times, and then launching the Stormcast Eternals, and their new setting of Fractured Realms. As mentioned, that Sacrosanct Chamber looks like a particularly painful loss, they were only released in 2018, so those are about 6 years old now, they came out in a big launch box fighting against the Night Haunts, and I must admit I feel that that's a pretty unpleasant life cycle from release to being mothballed, even if perhaps a few of the units might have some overlapping or slightly redundant roles, and the Stormcast range does kind of feel a bit like the Space Marine range for Age of Sigma, a slightly bloated range compared with the other armies. I feel like their way of communicating wasn't exactly excellent though, they went with a cheeky, they have decided to go and work on a cure for the reforging from the workshops in the Realm of Heavens, and I feel like playing that off as a bit of a joke maybe isn't exactly the best move for them, particularly how much time, effort and love goes into painting up these Warhammer armies. I guess looking into the far future, it's not impossible that some might return with the next edition. They do generally keep Age of Sigmar and Warhammer 40k editions coming every three years, so maybe the fifth edition Age of Sigmar will be a big return of the Sacrosanct Chamber. That's definitely not guaranteed though, and even if it were, it seems like it would be a strange decision to go through this mothballing process in the meantime. I can't help but think that losing major new ranges within six years after release might just undermine people's trust a bit with buying new models. No idea if this sort of thing will have any sort of major effect on Games Workshop sales and people who are willing to go back to them, but I can't help but think that some people who have caught the rough end of this might well refuse to buy from them in the future. Otherwise, for the other ranges, it's maybe understandable that Skaven get a whole bunch of kits retired. As the antagonist faction to the Stormcast in Age of Sigmar, they're going to be getting a whole bunch of new miniatures to replace a bunch of these. It sounds like from Games Workshop's communications, not literally everything is going to be replaced like for like, though it seems pretty much guaranteed that their most iconic units, things like Clan Rat, Storm Vermin, probably the Rat Ogres and things, are almost certainly going to get a replacement, plus any of the things that we saw featured in that Age of Sigmar trailer. Otherwise, less lucky though, are the factions that are just getting removed from the game. The Bone Splitters Orcs are going away, with seven of their kits biting the dust. As with the Sacrosants, they'll get a digital download battle tome that will be active for a year, and then go to Legends after that. I feel like some of these kits were kind of handy for Warhammer 40k as well, to be honest. Say those Savage Uruk boys, you could get a lot more of them for your money compared with, say, Beast Snaggers. They're certainly a lot older models, but I feel like they work kind of fine alongside the 40k orcs mixed in with a big green tide horde. If you were trying to flesh out a green skin horde, it might well be worth just taking a look at them to decide whether or not you'd want to pick any up before they go away. Perhaps the other really big hit for Age of Sigmar factions, though, were the Beasts of Chaos. They had a much, much more extensive range and a bit more of a dedicated fan base, given that they had that. A bit more of a fully fleshed out faction with the Beastmen harking all the way back to the distant past of Warhammer Fantasy. Brayhurst leading Gores and Bestigores, and the range having been expanded with all other sort of shadowy beasts from the forest over the years. They'd never really received all that much attention since Age of Sigmar became a thing, though. And it seems the Games Workshop have finally decided to pull the plug on them. This will just be massively painful for people who are collecting that faction. Imagine putting all the work and hobby effort into them and then basically just say that you can't play them in the game anymore, even if they're going to remain playable for one more year and then get Legends rules after that. 
It's maybe not the worst from this edition's point of view, but come the next edition in three years' time, I can't help but think that they're not going to get a lot of attention or being looked at, except as a bit of an afterthought. It sounds like the Beastmen are largely going to be moving over to the old world game system though, so I guess it doesn't necessarily mean that they're entirely out of the count if you do have an army of them. I can't help but think though, if you've got a whole load of circular bases for them, and the old world is using square bases, that's not going to be the best start. Never mind the fact that they're probably not going to translate absolutely directly across, and people who are current collectors of them might well have collected them with Age of Sigmar in mind, want to play in that game system, and not necessarily jump into that, as it doesn't appeal to literally everyone, as arguably the less well-supported fantasy setting, even if it does have its positives. Otherwise, it's perhaps bad news for the skirmish games, with the Warcry Chaos Warbands basically being removed en masse. These look like the guys that were originally released for the launch of Warcry, which has only been a thing since 2019. Literally all of these are pretty nice, cool, recent plastic releases. In general, the setting was pretty well praised for some very fun creative miniatures. Things like the Shadowy Raven Corvus Cabal, or the Splintered Fang with all the serpents. I must admit I'm not any sort of massive expert on Warcry, but these ones did sort of feel like what the system was all about. It must be kind of weird thinking that they're going to go and the rules going to go to Legends, while Games Workshop continue to churn out new stuff. Maybe that's kind of the nature of skirmish games. Generally the oldest thing is seized to make way for new things, but I feel like this is certainly part of the reason why I don't really generally tend to get too invested in Games Workshop's smaller skirmish game systems. Perhaps even more so than Warhammer 40k and Age of Sigmar, things tend to get made redundant at a rate that I'm just not really too comfortable with, having put time, effort and money into the models that are painted up. Finally, there's a few more miscellaneous miniatures to round out the calls. Not really too sure about the specific motivations for each of these, but I guess it's just lesser played things or lesser selling things. Might represent some War Scroll losses for their factions. I'd guess they'd get some legacy ones and then go in the same sort of way. As you can expect, all of this hasn't exactly gone down with their new Age of Sigmar social media post. Just looking at their Facebook page, looks like they've got 430 odd angry faces, 170 odd sad faces, compared with 250 or so likes. Not exactly the healthiest ratio of positive to negative there. The comments below seem to be expressing sadness or anger about various ranges going away. Some people sad to say that large chunks of their Stormcast collection will be made unusable with this, including plenty that they received through magazines, and long-time Beastmen collectors being very disappointed that have chosen to go this way. Overall, it does look like it could be the cost of Games Workshop forging ahead and keeping on with new plastic releases coming. Some of the stuff that it doesn't make sense for them to sell as much seems to be left by the wayside. Maybe understandable for some of the oldest miniatures in their armies, but when it's new plastic kits like the recent Stormcast stuff, it does seem really quite questionable and not very nice indeed. In any case though, look forward to hearing your thoughts down in the comments below. I know this is Age of Sigma, not really what I focus on the channel normally with 40k, but I'm sure there's plenty of you still going to be affected by this for people who play both systems. In any case, if you've enjoyed the coverage and you'd like to see more like this, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics. I do generally try and focus on the 40k for the most part. I feel like when Games Workshop drop this much of a bombshell on other ranges within their game systems, it's worth paying attention to, for what they might eventually do to certain 40k armies at some point. In any case, if you found the news videos interesting or useful, I would just like to mention that Auspex Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep all the content coming. Channel patrons do get a few advantages, Seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.